Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I have something to say about the United States right now and the economy that uh, has really struck me as I traveled about. Um, I only have the picture of here, but I'll talk a little about some other places I visited too. Right now I'm, um, oh, maybe 40 miles south of Barstow. And uh, it's desert land. There are mountains here. And I expect if you live higher up on the mountains, it's cooler in the middle of the summer. So uh, it's pretty barren, I'll show you. This place here, you'll notice these curbs here in the middle of the desert. There was a road here. This is a graystone in the middle, or graystone mixed with granite. And then there was this pretty fancy um, curb going along here. And um, off in the distance there are probably water pipes or sewer pipes so, and more of them all around here. And there was this giant subdivision apparently planned here some time ago. But, uh, and you'll notice these trees here seem to be part of the plantation that took place in addition to the curbs uh, and the roads that were set up. And those trees are still alive, but there were quite a few palm trees that, um, that just didn't make it. This was just a little forest of palm trees that didn't make it, see here. And over here on the other side, this was the main road into the planned subdivision and there's plantings of palm trees all along it. I thought maybe some were still alive, but I think maybe they're all they passed on for lack of water. And um, I just came in the entrance road. And then I took a look at the buildings over here. There are a few buildings, all deserted. And uh, then I, I guess there's a school over there, which is in excellent repair. Good looking school on the other side of the road. But basically what we have here is somebody's dream. The one person's American dream. Probably put a lot of money into it. Probably bought the land for not much money. And then arranged for this build out. I don't know what you call it when you get the curbs and, and the roads in. Probably planned a bunch of, uh, also I saw places for irrigation, concrete like places for irrigation water to, to flow through in the wet season. So they planned for water drainage too and probably had plans for you know all the utilities for people to buy homes here. Uh, but the few buildings that were on the property are just to rack and ruin right now. And then this other building over here it had a tile roof maybe it was a sales office the tiles are all down. Maybe somebody is using them to build a new house or demolishing that place. I don't know. So a little earlier this um, winter I was traveling down Route 66. You know Route 66? Uh, the song about that from long ago and how you get your kicks on Route 66. And it used to be the main thoroughfare that people used or one of them. Uh, from the east to the west in, in the United States. And then later, the superhighways were built, east to west, and all the businesses uh, along Route 66 languished because of it, because most of the traffic would bypass Route 66 and go down these, these very fast superhighways instead. But if you'd really like an enjoyable trip through America, I suggest taking what remains of Route 66 if possible because it's much more scenic. But one thing I noticed about Route 66 was that it was a little like this. There were just so many buildings that were boarded up or, or halfway demolished or deserted or um, maybe one person would be living in a hotel or motel that used to see a thriving business. And there were some, some businesses that catered to the local population that were open and doing okay, but that was the minority of businesses in a lot of those places. 
And just uh, what I got in those areas is that the slowdown uh, in the economy is pretty big in the United States and that there are other issues that may be covered in the news that are really not relevant to our life as Americans uh, that, are, that are taking up the spot on the news that should be covered by what should we do about the uh, local economies. What should we do to help middle America rise to meet its rise to meet its financial needs? What in the way of um, business aid? What in the way of helping people accomplish their dreams in America? You know. And the other thing that I've been noticing lately is whenever I go to a store, I notice that the prices are. You know. I don't know what's happened in the last few years with regard to prices. It's, it's, it's phenomenal, really, how much prices have risen, it seems like to me. I don't know what the cause of it is, but these two things, the failure of businesses in all but the large cities, it seems, uh, and the inc very greatly increased price of goods, which I don't find that much substantiation for in the consumer price index. These two things add up to um, economic difficulties in the United States that are not being squarely and honestly faced, I feel. And I hope during the coming year that Congress has a chance to look at all this and hear the stories of Americans and rise to the aid of of the average person who needs a safe a way, a safe place, and a, a, a good business, uh, good schools to to keep his family safe and her family safe, and 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 to let them grow up in an environment where. The American ideals are cherished and espoused and looked up to, rather than a crime-ridden place that's full of, you know, bad examples of the way to wisdom and love and light. The kind of place where a family can feel that their, their lives are not threatened, you know, as they go about their daily activities, but instead the community looks one family to the next family for support and understanding and assistance in uh, grassroots growing of local businesses and sustainable living. What do you say? Suppose we had much smaller houses with a lot more space around them. Wouldn't that be easier to heat and to, um, and to keep cool in the summertime? Wouldn't the prices of utilities be lower? And outside, the children could be playing, right? Wouldn't that be cool? And the other thing I'm thinking is that the question might be raised in family to family whether we really need the electronics that are so sought after by the break-in experts and the thieves and so forth. What would happen if our family did without um, uh, television sets and computers and handhelds and so forth, how would our quality of life be affected? Would it be worse or would it be better? Would we be stronger in our ethics and our values with or without the virtual reality? I made up my own mind about this long ago and decided I didn't really want television in my life. I didn't want that kind of entertainment, that my entertainment would be the great outdoors. <laughs> and church, you know, and friends, playing dominoes and so forth. So uh, just my thought is, what can we all do to make America a better place to live? and more safe for our children? And what can we do to help our children grow into the ideals of, 
of democratic living that were envisioned when the Constitution was written. Yeah, that's what I think. We have a lot of questions to answer right now. But, well, you all take care. I love you lots. I wish you great abundance and prosperity and happiness, each and every one. <laughs>